beautiful soul and welcome back to my channel if you're new special welcome to you in this video i show you how i set up my palette and also we start working into an oil painting which we started in another video you can go back and check it out for yourself if you want to know the beginning stages of my process in this video we get between 40 and 50 percent into this work and we begin by continuing to build the values playing with color experimenting a little bit and of course, throughout all of it, you will hear my internal dialogue now made public on my YouTube channel, which is super fun and also very entertaining for me. So I get to be a goofball. Um, I hope you love it. Thank you so much for all your comments. Feel free to drop a comment and let me know what you want to learn next from me. Share your work and tag me on Instagram at Katerina S. Popova. If you found this video helpful, to help us continue to record and share and edit these videos. We love you so much and we'll see you soon. Hello friends. So I'm about to get started with my day. And before I jump into creation, I love to burn a little bit of Palo Santo and just clear the energy. I have been in traffic for a while this morning. So I like to light the Palo Santo and then just let it just let it burn and it's like a beautiful incense and of course you know if you're concerned about the ethically sourced wood make sure you do your research before you purchase but it's just a really great way to clear the space and it smells amazing i love the smell of burning wood and then just place it safely somewhere away from the chemicals Alrighty. So as you can see here, I have my tea, my beautiful strawberry cup set up. I'm just having some Moroccan mint tea from Trader Joe's. And this keeps me super cozy and staying hydrated is important. So now what I wanna do is I want to set up my palette. And as I mentioned before, I use Williamsburg oil paints in this case. So I'm gonna just set up my paint for this painting that we've been working on. And if you haven't seen my intro video, check it out. You'll be able to see how I got started. But I haven't been in, I haven't been in in a few days. So for that reason, I am going to have to start over. <laughs> and some people freeze. I do have a fridge in my studio. Some people will freeze the paint and I start with a generous amount of white because I'm going to be using it a lot in this work especially when it comes to the areas by the window because we're painting the sunroom and then I'm just going to create a palette based on what this you know what the tones and the values were from last time and it's not going to be exact but because I work in layers this process is very forgiving so don't worry I'm gonna zoom in a little bit on my palette so you can watch me set this up without getting paint all over my beautiful camera. <laughs> so like I said, I was in a little bit of traffic and I was having trouble finding parking. So it's important for me to just take a moment and breathe as I'm getting set up because I'm gonna just zoom in here. So you can see how I'm gonna be setting this up. Okay, give you a nice intimate view of my palette. All right, so we're just gonna continue loading up. So right now I had permanent yellow medium and I'm gonna work in an order to help me stay organized. So the next color might be another form of yellow. In this case I found a yellow ochre so that's helpful and then the white can stay out but the, the other ones I'm gonna put away I have a little tube of raw sienna here and I'm just gonna squeeze out a little bit here continuing on this process and full disclosure my paint, it needs a little bit of TLC, so please don't judge my tubes right now. 
I'm due for some new ones because this is all paint from when I was getting ready for my solo show. And a lot of it's running out. I'm just finishing up what I have. So like I mentioned, I don't know if I've shared, I think I shared this tool in my previous videos, but it's a great tool for saving money on paint. You will get so much more paint out of it if you use it. It's like 20 bucks on Amazon. There's another yellow, and honestly, I have no idea what this yellow is, but I think it's a cadmium medium. So in this fashion, we're just going to continue loading up our palette and I do want to use a little bit of orange in this piece so I'm gonna squeeze in a little bit of orange here see if I can point in that direction for you and there's not a ton of red in this work so I don't really need a red I do I am interested though in burnt sienna and this tube needs some loving I'm not the most neat person you'll ever meet. I like to take care of the things that I have, but <laughs> you can definitely improve upon, you know, what you're learning from me and make this your own. Okay. Love burnt sienna. Burnt sienna is one of my favorite colors and it's also wonderful for it's wonderful for underpaintings too. So if you don't like the super bright red that I used, Another alternative is a burnt sienna. Beautiful. And we're gonna actually be using a lot of this, so I'm just gonna be really generous with it off the bat. Okay, so we do need, for this specific work, this looks like burnt umber. Burnt umber is gonna be essential. There's a lot of browns in the center and floor, and we've already placed a lot of that color down but I'm just gonna keep going with it. So you'll see me squeezing, squeezing. I mean, the narration for these videos is just gonna keep getting better. So if you think I'm weird now, just wait. <laughs> As I get used to talking and painting, we're all in trouble. Okay, that is a sad looking tube, but we're not gonna judge ourselves today, not today. All right, so these, are, I'm right now, what's really important to me is to put down all the essentials. And then I do use some pre-mixed fun colors, as I like to call them, the ones that aren't as easy to mix on your own. And I usually get these, and they're more expensive because the pigment is usually something more rare. But this is an example of that. This chartreuse green, this anise green from Charbon. Love it. I'm going to squeeze them out because I'm gonna use that for the greenery. So wait, okay, moving on. Um, one of the most important colors in my palette is Viridian. Viridian is a deep green, also can be used, phthalo green is a little bit deeper and more transparent, but Viridian is beautiful. So use that. Ultramarine blue, must have. Ultramarine blue is one of my favorite colors. And you can leave some space if you have more pre-mixed greens, but we can mix a lot of our colors. So I'm just gonna kill this tube. I'm gonna finish it. I'm just gonna let, I'm gonna make some space in my box here because it's getting out of control. <laughs> and we don't want that. All right. And by the way, so we're gonna be doing this and then I'm going to, I set a timer for an alarm be, um, for parking because I had to park on the street today. And that's why I came in a little bit more frazzled than usual. When I just pull in and I park, I feel a lot calmer, but... Okay, so this is kind of a specialty blue that I can't really mix on my own. So this is one of those colors, aside from the basics. This is light cobalt blue and I do, I, I love this color and it's like a treat for me. So, highly recommend. And you know what, it's funny, as I'm showing you all this, I'm also taking time to organize my paint a little bit and that's making me super happy. So I'm just gonna squeeze, I don't really need this color, it's very close to Viridian, but I'm just gonna squeeze so I can fix some of these tubes. All right, amazing, 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 amazing. 
Now I do have some fun colors in here and we'll be getting into that later. It's not really necessary for painting but I have um, cobalt teal and then I have these Gapka, I think it's pronounced. They have neon oil paint and um, we might play with that at a later time or maybe even towards the end stages of this painting. I think it's important to use these kind of crazy colors as little highlights or once we get into the detailed phase, because right now we don't want them to distract us. We wanna make really informed decisions and make sure the painting is strong without using, someone referred to it as using like, it's not like a crutch, but that's how I, I like to make sure my painting is strong, even if it's done in a limited palette. And then if I wanna go crazy later, I can. Does that make sense? Okay, so we got our browns, we got our blues, we got our white, we got our yellow. What are we missing here? Okay, so one of the other important colors that comes in the set that I recommended is also linked in my Amazon store from Williamsburg. That is um, Alizarin Crimson. Alizarin Crimson, Thalo Green, Ultramarine or Thalo Blue can mix the most beautiful black. And that's how we mix the black for the underpainting. So I might go in and actually do that again now. I might mix a black of my own. So, and here's another tube of burnt sienna. And I'm just seeing what kind of color, I have lots of really fun colors in here, but we don't need them. Okay, so I have here Viridian. This is another yellow ochre. I'll put this out. Awesome, okay. So we have some colors down, we got some basics, and we're gonna make this palette pop. So I'm gonna be looking at my image, which you have seen me work on already. So you know that it's a painting of a sunroom dog, and what I wanna do with this piece is I really wanna make it sing. I want the sunroom to be glowing, and I want the dog to be popping, and so I'm just gonna start looking at and seeing like, Maybe even squinting my eyes and remembering the space that I'm painting because I know what it looks like. Okay, what are some things that I can implement in here? And taking my palette knife, I'm gonna start mixing some of these tones, right? So I'm gonna actually start with the lighter ones because it's intuitive for me. So I, you know, I'm not sure what I wanna do with the darks yet today. So I'm just gonna start mixing. And so here's a beautiful white. And in our case too, the lightest colors of the sunroom are gonna be super light yellow. So just like a dab, even less, a little tiny dab of yellow. I could have probably gotten away with less. And we're just gonna start going into the lights here, okay? Good, and I'm gonna also add a little bit of linseed oil because this paint is a little too sticky for my liking and I would like for it to be a little bit more buttery, less sticky. Okay, so you can take, this is a Williamsburg linseed oil. I'm just gonna use the cap a little bit. We don't want a ton of oil, otherwise it's gonna make it runny, but we can just drip a little drop and see how nicely it mixes now. Look at that. Buttery, buttery texture. Oh my God, I'm gonna laugh when I listen to these, these commentaries of mine because it's so funny. I've always wanted to record myself painting but I usually do time lapses and now it's like I get to hear my internal dialogue out loud and so I'm gonna work on making it helpful and fun for you guys, don't worry, it's not all gonna be crazy thoughts. Okay, we're getting somewhere here. Look at that delicious paint. And it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just kind of, I'm even going over top. Sometimes I even mix with my brush, which is kind of a no-no in the art world, but I like it. <laughs> so, um, okay. So the next light color, and this one is actually in the same warm family. So we're thinking of cool and warm areas is gonna be this orange. I'm actually gonna take half of this light yellow and I'm gonna pop in a little bit of this orange. And this is specifically on the floor as well as some of the planters. 
Oops. Good, this is a little too intense. So how do we neutralize a color when it's too bright? We take a little bit of the opposite color and that might be a little too much. So now if the orange is too orange, we add a little bit of blue and maybe a little bit more white. And maybe a little bit more ochre because it's not really orange orange, it's kind of like a tan fleshy tone color. Okay. Great. Delicious. Doesn't this look like icing you just want to eat? So tasty. Okay. Now I'm seeing, I'm just going to move in this orange direction because that's what's calling to me right now. This isn't the right or wrong way. I might be making this up, but <laughs> so also, when you watch my videos, please know this is my own way of painting. It might not be 100% archival. I do try to research all my mediums, so painting fat over lean, making sure I'm using quality materials, protecting my paint and all that good stuff, um, using the best for archival qualities for my collectors. But in the, in the art world, I know there's going to be a lot more instructors who will be sharing things with you differently. So I want you to keep an open mind. We all have our own way that we found to work and as long as you're having fun and as long as your paintings aren't like cracking open then you're fine just keep going and if something does happen like a cracked painting you'll learn from it and you will not make that mistake again so only experimentation joy fun play okay that those are the only rules in my world and i want you to also feel free in your studio don't overthink this pro it's freaking paint okay this is a pigment that i'm using to spread around a white piece of cloth like there's nothing to worry about even though we might worry of course that's human nature truly that like nothing bad can happen when we paint that's why I love it so much painting is so mindful and present and even though I started recording my work I find it so deeply satisfying because okay and this is kind of happening naturally but my palette is just kind of going diagonally from light to dark here and feel free to, of course, do it in a circle. Some people will do this in a line, and I, I do like that. I'm just gonna go in a line, and I'm also using a disposable palette. And if I don't finish all this paint, I will be working on a daily sketch or something smaller, so I'm gonna use it up. Like I said, I don't always come into my studio every day, so things can be... Okay, I'm making a brown now. So you're just watching my crazy process. And as you start mixing your own paint, some people just kind of mix it as they go. And I've been learning over the years, when I was younger, I felt really rushed all the time. And I was like, I just want to start painting. And I never took the time to mix it. And I still, this isn't a lesson. This is just telling you, you can do whatever you want. I still had some awesome, awesome artwork. But what I'm finding as I'm getting older is that when you mix the paint and you take the time to set it up and look at your image or your, your, you know, whatever you're painting in front of you or even your imagination, I feel like it just gives you a plan. And from that plan of having all these different values, you could get really creative once you have everything set up. So you don't have to stop the flow. You can kind of like, I'm gonna add some blue to this brown and make it really rich. Wow, that's beautiful. I love mixing ultramarine blue and um, burnt umber or burnt sienna. I feel like the browns and blues are like the best colors, like a deep rich brown. Here it is. So beautiful. Stunning. Okay, I'm going to nerd out today. I feel it. And this is perfect. So we're going to be painting together for the next hour or so. So I might as well show you how I set up the palette, right? Awesome. Okay. So now we've had these like this orange spectrum that you can see and you can do this differently of course too. So I'm looking at my image and now what I'm seeing is there are some, so I'm gonna actually take a pile of this white and I'm gonna on the side here where there's a little ochre already mixed with the orange, I'm gonna make a light ochre orange pile because the dog, the parts of the dog that are in the shadow are like a warmish gray. And that's exciting because that means I can add a little bit of it was, oh that's one thing I did not add to my palette 
um, alizarin crimson, so I'm gonna do that now. I've already have enough cadmium red in my underpainting. I really don't need it for this piece. Sometimes I use a lot of cad um, cadmium, but really not really. My paintings rarely have tons of red in them, aside from the underpainting. Okay, so I wanna make a nice, and you'll hear some clicking noises from our heater. I wanna make a like a purple, so I'm gonna mix a little tiny bit of alizarin and ultramarine, and then I'm gonna mix that in to this orange ochre mixture. While I'm gonna keep looking at my little dog and the shadows that are on it, so we don't want it to be super purple. That's not the point. So we just wanna add a little more blue, a little more blue, and a little bit more ochre. Maybe a little more blue. So you'll not know until you try. That is the secret, the only secret. Okay, that's really blue. So ultramarine blue is so powerful. Do you see how I just added the smallest amount and it's already basically turned this into a purple situation here? Let's see if I can, yeah. Okay, so we want it to be more neutral. So neutralizing it means adding the ochre back in or maybe even a little bit of brown. Now it's looking more gray, which we like for the shadows, right? And now while I'm here, let me take a look at some of the shadow areas on the windowsill of the sunroom, okay? Okay, now I'm seeing that the rug is a little darker than I have on my current painting, so I'm gonna take some more. I'm gonna take a little pile of the blue and I'm gonna mix in a little bit of the brown into the blue here. Maybe like a gray. I'm loving it, loving it. And see how I'm almost done with the white, so I'm gonna have to squeeze a little bit more white in here. Okay, so pretty much the, the browns, the deep, deep browns that I've already mixed are the darkest parts. And I'm just gonna move this yellow over here because I don't really need tons of it anymore. What I am gonna do is I'm gonna squeeze a little bit more white and I'm gonna mix the gray for the windowsill. So it's a warm yellowish gray because there's a lot of light coming through, at least on my image, but I can imagine what it looks like. I remember this room so, so well. Just a few weeks ago, I looked at it. So I'm taking, and I'm taking some white and now I'm gonna carefully start adding in some of this gray, adding a little oil. And the way to see the true color, or it's not gonna be true, color is subjective to everyone who looks at it. But the way to help you know the difference between colors is by taking something white and placing it next to it. And you'll instantly see, so I'm just taking my paper towels and pointing them towards my picture. You'll see that it's actually like a tannish gray. So what I'm gonna do is maybe take a little bit more of the yellow ochre. Talking and painting is hard, y'all. Thanks for putting up with me. It's fun though, too, I like it. Okay, so a little bit more blue here. A little more yellow. A little tiny bit of alizarin until I get the desired outcome. And guess what? If I don't like it once I start painting, I can just go ahead and do something different. That's the magic of paint. All right, I don't want to lose this other pile that I have that's like a little more purpley for the dog shadow, so perfect. I'm just taking a little more blue here. At this point, there's no structure to where my paint is going. So if you know the organization of your palette, power to you. I'm gonna be using kind of the mad scientist method for now, but I know that the darks are gonna be at the end and the lights are gonna to be towards us, so. Okay. Mixing paint is so satisfying. 
So beautiful. Love it. Okay. Whew. Okay, now I see there's a little grayish. I'm just going to mix a little bit of this for another shadow area that just revealed itself to me. So as you paint, you will see these areas reveal themselves. I know it sounds a little crazy, but they do. Like, I swear to you, the minute I start painting, by the time I'm done with it, I notice like a million things that I didn't notice before. Okay, wonderful. Okay, the next thing I want to mix, and I'm actually going to need, I'm going to move this pile of don't worry about that. I'm gonna use that later in some way, shape, or form. I'm gonna put my lizard in here as well. Okay, the next thing I wanna do is there are some shadows that are kind of light shadows, and I think the cobalt blue is gonna be so beautiful for these. So I'm going to go ahead and mix in a little bit of cobalt. I can actually put it close here grab some more white <clears throat> maybe a tiny smidge of ultramarine and maybe taking a little bit of the alizarin all of this is completely intuitive so don't ask me what why I'm looking and then because I know my paint from from a decade, actually more, of painting, when I see something, like, I know what color it is. And you can train yourself by looking, for example, if you're driving and you're looking at a field, you can train yourself to start identifying the colors, not for the, of any other reason, but to help you mix your paint so you'll intuitively know what to look for, okay? Amazing. Okay, so we're almost there for now, and we can always mix as we start painting. New revelations will definitely come through, so don't think we're done here. Amazing. So see how easy and fun this was? And for, truth be told, I don't really take this much time preparing my palette. Like a lot of times I will use it on the fly, but because you're with me, enjoying my studio time, I decided to just do a whole shebang, so I hope you liked it. And don't worry if you have like this green here and the cobalt. We're going to figure out what to do with that stuff later. Okay, this looks really good. I'm going to show you. Before I show you though, what I'm going to do is take, I'm going to take off these gloves because they're a disaster. <laughs> And I'm going to show you all this palette. It's a little bit chaotic, and maybe as we work together, I will do a better job. But honestly, this makes sense to me. So as long as it makes sense to you, it's fine. And you can always mix in more white if you need something to be lighter or yellow. Actually, a great way to lighten super dark areas is with yellow. So now I'm going to pour in some turpentine into this jar here and then we'll get started and we'll begin the best part just painting so I just ordered this gamsol I'm going to show it to you this is the paint thinner that I use it's odorless I love it but I still recommend opening a window when you use it because it is still toxic even if it doesn't smell like toxins it might still have of course it does, it's a chemical. So I'm just gonna fill this in. I don't need the full jar filled, but I use, if you're wondering what this is, this is from tomato sauce. It's the best. Tomato sauce jars are the best for turpentine in my humble opinion. Okay, amazing work. Hope you liked to see the palette and I will see you inside the painting video. Okay, my friends, welcome back. So now I'm gonna get started. And speaking of getting started, after today, I definitely need some more gloves. <laughs> I am almost out. Well, I am out of my gloves, but it's not the end of the world. 
So today we are going to continue this piece which I've already shared with you um, that I've been working on slowly. I'm all about slow beginnings this year because just honoring the craziness that's been my life over the past few months. And so to get started, I have the palette prepared just like I showed you and we're gonna just jump in. I'm so excited. So what is the best place to start when you come back from not painting for a few days? I've been painting at home, so I have been creative, but I realized like, okay, where do I wanna begin? So what I'm gonna do, for some reason, my intuition right now is calling to focus on the gray kind of mid-tone areas. Mid-tones are the parts of your painting that are not too light and not too dark. And so for, in this case, it's a combination of grays and blues and sort of these neutral areas on the sunroom. So I'm gonna go through looking at my image since I don't have this, unfortunately, this beautiful room in front of me. I'm just gonna try to use my memory and, and see what I can come up with. And I have the little bit of oil here. So if I need a little bit more oil, I can always dabble in and it is fine. I'm actually gonna turn off this heater because it's so noisy. Oh, all right. Perfect. All right. Perfect. So this is kind of like a light, and I have my white out as well, so if I need to, I can go in and edit this. So we're just gonna do one step at a time, one area at a time. There is zero rush. And if I need to lighten or darken something, that is also available to me. And I can use a paper towel or a rag if you prefer to recycle your rags to wipe down my brush after using each of the pre-mixed colors. And that's how you avoid mud. Okay, so this paint's coming out a little bit dry when it starts to get a little stuck on the canvas. We need more paint. So don't be afraid to paint like a millionaire because you already are. All right. Now we're getting into it. Good boy, Calibri is next to me helping mommy. So even though I mixed all these areas, there's sometimes just something missing and that's totally fine. You're never gonna get it 100% perfect. You can always add, take away, and mix more. That's what makes painting so amazing is that you rarely have to worry like everything, like if you're a realist painter, and you have that gift and you have like a very strict system that's awesome too i'm not so i can get away with murder in my work and it's great <laughs> i love it i love the freedom of it and that's why i'm so drawn to it i think as a kid i was i wasn't really great at sports and i i don't know everything else just didn't seem as fun but art is something that has always been a part of my journey and i'm so so grateful all right, so just finding, and I'm gonna, if I see a really strong highlight, I'm gonna preserve it and protect it by just painting it in. Amazing. Okay, like I said, for some reason now I'm, <laughs> I got distracted, but that's okay. I'm gonna go through and I will find those gray areas. And some of it might be a little darker. Some of it will be a little lighter. And it'll be different too, like what I mixed on the palette is gonna show up completely different in relation to all those colors. So that's why painting is so intuitive. You just never know until you try it. And here's the other thing I'm gonna do right now. Underneath the window, kind of like where the chairs are, there is a really dark shadow. 
It's not quite black, but I wanna mark it in right away so I don't lose it. Cause that, that's gonna create some nice depth. Okay. And now as you're gonna start looking at this, you're gonna notice, okay, that's a little too bright or too dull. And you can go back in and you can fix it. Amazing. Now, the process of me sharing is gonna, <laughs> it's so nice when you see a time lapse on YouTube or on Instagram. And the truth is painting can be really slow. And the more we honor that and the less we fight it, the easier life gets. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna jump around just a little bit. <laughs> I, I just, I wanna mark down these light, light areas in the window, cause I still see a little bit of blank canvas and right now it's irritating me a little bit, so. Going in. Hopefully you can see that. Awesome. Love it. I do whatever I want in my paintings. That's the one, t the one thing I can do, because guess what? If it doesn't work out, <laughs> scrap the whole thing and start over, paint over it, recycle it, make a collage out of it. There's like nothing to lose. And that's why I think more people need to paint because it feels intimidating and you have this whole idea, this whole vision of what you want to create. And then it rarely, just like life, it never works out exactly the way that we expect it to. However, if we stay open and we continue trying, we might get something even better than what we expected or learn a new technique or develop our own style or invent something new. It's also simple. And I'm contradicting myself as to what I said I was gonna do, but you, <laughs> you will see why in a moment. And actually, also like when I was growing up in Russia, I had this myth that artists don't use rulers and they have to do everything by hand. And I, I continue to bring it up because it's so silly. I love using a ruler because I know my hand is not as strong as I cannot create perfect lines. And it's not about perfection, but it's just to keep things balanced and the shapes clear especially if you are trying to create a perspective in your work. If not, then don't use it. If you don't like it, don't use it. I just, I like to share that I use it so that you know you have tools available to you. And the same way some people use projectors, doesn't mean they're less of an artist. It's all just a tool. And no matter what tool you use, it still requires for you to add your own special perspective. Um, so, yeah. I'm so happy. When I paint, I think I'm the happiest. And I want you to be as well. I used to get really anxious, so if you are someone who gets anxious when you paint, just watch my video on some of the tools that I share on how to prevent that anxiety. And I hope you find it helpful. All right, now I'm getting carried away in the details and I'm gonna stop myself after this one. Just because I see that this planter bottom has this like, lip that got hit by the sun which I didn't notice before so I wanted to just pull up that in there right now <laughs> okay all right amazing since I have my brush loaded with this very very light yellow almost white I'm gonna go through and pay attention to the shapes of my son Calibri's little hind legs You know what's so funny? I have, I wanted to record videos of me painting and I always made such a, like, I overcomplicated it in my head. And now that I'm doing it, it's making me feel less lonely at the studio. So it's just, it's so interesting how that works. Okay. So if I'm paying attention, and we're gonna be working on this painting for a while, so don't, worry it's gonna take me a few maybe like two weeks 
So I'm not showing you everything, but I'm showing you the majority of the process so you'll know how I think by the end of, <laughs> I was gonna say my life. I, I'm, I plan on continuing to do, it, to do this. So as I share more of my painting process with you, you're gonna get to know how I think and I hope some of my strategies and problem solving in my artwork can help you in your studio practice, whether you are just starting or using it as a hobby or even healing tool. Art is a powerful healing. It's great for processing trauma and releasing things or you're a professional artist just looking to gain some new ideas and skills. Whatever your goals are, I'm here for you. I'm not an expert, I'm just someone who loves to paint. I've made a career out of it, and I learned from a lot of other people. So in a way, my knowledge is kind of like a compilation of all the other things that I learned, both through trial as well as by studying with masters. But yeah, it's kind of fun to paint and talk. So for those of you who, are, who love to share your process, try it sometime. It's like strangely therapeutic. It's almost like I've always wished someone was here and I never really wanted people to stare at me while I paint, but it's both private and intimate and public at the same time. It's kind of cool. I'm glad you guys are watching. And by the way, so I'll tell you all a funny story about listening to your intuition. And over the holidays, I got really, really sick. I got the flu and I was out for like two weeks. It was a bummer because I couldn't come in and paint and I was missing the gym, which I really loved the gym. And the funny thing was is that I, was, I watched like all the stuff on Netflix that I wanted to watch. I felt like, okay, I have like nothing left to watch at all. And then about bra I was taking a nap and I woke up and YouTube or Netflix or something like changed the algorithm and placed it on Bob Ross. And that's exactly how I got reminded. I'm like, oh my gosh, I want to record myself painting. Like I want to do that too. And it was a simple, simple thing. And my video, the reason why I'm sharing this with you, the video of me painting that I, the first one that I posted, that's like the best performing video on my channel and it's so simple. So the lesson for me was, you know, I'm not trying to go viral or anything through sharing these, but it was funny because I was just sharing it out of my pure joy, enjoyment and my desire to pass on my knowledge to people. And that's the one that people resonated with the most. So a lot of times we get in our own way and we overthink things and in reality, it's so much simpler than we think. So if you feel confused or you're trying all these different strategies, as my coach Kara says, stop trying. Just go do that thing that lights you up and that's 90% of the time that's the thing that's gonna resonate and land with other people too. We all need to remember that because we all overthink. We all overthink everything and that can be a damper on our joy. And the purpose of life, in my opinion, is to live a full, beautiful, happy life. Okay, so back to painting. Right now, I am taking the gray that I pre-mixed and I'm just, I'm gonna try to be more neat about this, but I'm working through those under areas on the sunroom wall that's underneath the window. So it's in shadow, but it, it has a lot of sunlight bouncing off of it, so it's a very warm, Oh, it's a very warm shadow. So I want to make sure I'm honoring that. And what else do we have going on here? Some more of these yellow, yellow areas. And sometimes I'll get quiet, so just follow along. It's all about responding to what you're seeing. Okay, and now I did see that this was kind of trying to tackle Calibri's, my dog's legs. And they are in the shadow. And even though they are in the 
the shadow, he is a white dog, so the shadow will be lighter than the darker areas that are naturally darker, like browns or blues. And if you ever want to do an exercise where you tackle, you can draw a sphere, so draw one sphere shaded that's black, one sphere shaded that's gray, and one that's white, and you'll see how this differs. Basically, the values will just be very subtle changes on the white one and more prominent changes on the gray one and also subtle changes on the dark one meaning it will be more dark focused once again for anyone confused Calibri has spots so <laughs> his rear end is uh, I'm not depicting any specific region Love it, love it, love it. And as you pick a certain shade off your palette, you will notice that there are other areas that might have that value or that color and you can go through right away and add them if you want to and this creates for a very cohesive painting. Kind of bouncing around and spreading the love can be really impactful. I am on Calibri's butt again. Can't stay away. <laughs> All right, that's good for now. Now what I wanna do is, at the time of, let me see here. Okay, actually one thing we did not mix is a delicious, we did not mix a delicious green, but that's okay because I squeezed out that pre-mix green, which is really cool. I'm going to play with the floor because I have so much pre-mix, oops, that's a lot of linseed oil. Oh well. I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna get a, better, a bigger brush, so I'm gonna use this number 14 Shara flat. And I'm gonna take I'm gonna go through the darks again. So I'm gonna take this mixture of burnt umber and blue, which is pretty much black brown, very deep, very chocolatey, and seeing if there's any areas that are that need some darker love. Definitely under the, this little dog bed here, for sure, in the corner where the light doesn't hit. Definitely under the sunroof. You can also start kind of we're gonna go we're probably gonna touch up the blacks again so don't worry and now I'm actually just gonna take and mix in the lighter burnt umber burnt sienna mixture here and I'm gonna just start lightening up this this area and here's the thing. So the floor of this sunroom, it's kind of like it's going into the distance. The perspective is heading into the distance. So kind of like holding up the ruler to your image or to your observation. And we're not gonna, I'm, I don't worry about perfection when it comes to this. If you're really trying to get like a realist feel, you can obviously adapt. And this is where I get a little crazy. I might take some cobalt blue, and for the cracks in between the bricks, I might start mixing in some intuitive color, because who cares, it's my painting, right? Or maybe some gray. So fun. And you can stop and walk away anytime you need a break. All right. Some of this is, looks like a little bit of a lizard and crimson. So I actually ended up having to use some of the bricks. 
And this is the part where I get really expressive and I don't overthink it because as I'm gonna be working on this, guess what, I can always go back and edit it. That's the, that's the super, super fun part about this. It's painting is addictive too, it's super hard to stop once you get started. So now what I'm doing is I got this delicious orange hue and I'm seeing where the biggest parts of this orange burnt sienna are coming through for my, for my eyeballs. And for you, whatever it is, you might pick up a hot color and you might start noticing other parts where it pops up. And if you apply it in a weird way like I just did, don't worry, we're gonna fix that in a moment, so. Okay. Don't need that. Okay, so that was a little too hot. You'll see it doesn't look right. You can just tone it down. Tone it down, and when the paint even though, like I said, I work in layers and sometimes I'll come in a week later to work on a painting. I want you to know that it is really fun to paint wet and wet. So if you have the ability to mix in colors that can be blend, like I don't blend, you notice, I kind of just apply the colors over top and they blend automatically in a really funky way. And this is how we play. This is the juicy part. I told you all, the beginning is super important because we wanna establish the map, which is a drawing. But as we start to get into this, this is where all the magic happens. So fun. Super fun. Okay. All right. So if I'm not loving how let me see what I did with my rule. I had a big, I had a big straight edge somewhere. Oh, here, okay. So if I'm not loving how the floor is coming and it feels like still a little wonky, I'll take, I'm gonna just take, and I'm gonna be wrapping up for the day soon because I need to move my car, but I'm gonna take the ruler I'm just gonna make sure, based on my reference and my memory, I can spread the love out that way. Make the perspective pop a little bit more, right? So good, so fun. And this part, so the, where the light falls, the shadow inside where the light falls is definitely going to be much lighter, but just so that it looks even right now. Nope, nope, nope. I want to pop it even more. All right. So the blue and the burnt sienna, I'm loving this combination. Because they're pretty much opposites. The orange. Aren't you glad you're watching this video? Ha, ha, ha. All right. <laughs> this, we're still kind of playing. None of this, no painting's ever done, right? It's like that quote. Paintings are never finished, just abandoned. And we don't abandon our stuff, but the reason why I'm saying this is because you get to play and when you come back the next day, you might love an area, you might wanna change another one. It's all part of the process. I never have a painting that I like work on from start to finish. That's just automatically, you know, that's just not my, that's not my way of working. And for some of you, that might be your way of working. So just honor the flow. Amazing. I'm just evening out that weird area that I've, Created. Awesome. 
some sauce. All right, this is gonna be a pretty good stopping place for today. Um, and also, I don't wanna overwhelm you all. This process can, you might get lost in a flow and paint for hours and hours and hours. Or you might come in and lay some color down and feel exhausted. Like some days are like that. So it's really important. Just honor your body's energy. Everything's gonna get done. Everything, I swear to you, if you believe you're gonna reach your destiny on this earth, you will. And if your destiny is like mine and includes being an artist, we have more than enough time for all the things we wanna do. And the less we resist that truth, the faster we'll get to manifest and experience everything that we want. I know this because I'm living it. And I know you will too. Alright, oh, I'm loving this. This is such a, I mean, this is going to be a really fun painting because I'm really taking my time. I'll be honest with you guys, last year I started to feel so rushed, so that's why I'm taking my time on my new work. Like, it might take me a year to do 10 paintings and that's completely okay with me at this stage of my life because I've done my share of rushing and meeting deadlines and... I wanna have fun, I wanna enjoy. I wanna go super deep with my work this year. So, anyways, that's it for today. I am hoping you're enjoying the process. Thank you all for sending me messages about it. And if you have any questions, you can DM me on Instagram at Katarina S. Popova. Some of you have already reached out, so don't be shy. I love hearing from you and I am looking forward to continuing this painting and others and continuing to share the process with you. I'm just like I said, painting is highly addictive. <laughs> it's like that meme with the kids, you know, don't buy yourself, don't get yourself, your kids hooked on art supplies. That addiction does not go away. It's the best kind of addiction in my book. All right, my loves, have a gorgeous day. I'll see you in the next video. Ta-ta for now.